So in the second part of this uh, unit on Python syntax, we're going to look at a few more examples of uh, data structures we're using in Python. So um, we've sort of already looked at lists and we've mentioned tuples, but we'll carry them, do them in a little bit more detail at this point. Um, so all the three um, types we're discussing here are used to store collections of items. Um, so they can be used to store different types of values, um, but they also behave slightly differently and therefore have different uses. So we'll start with the list. So we've just said lists store a sequence of values that you can index um, and you can also ask which value comes next. So lists, the key thing, they're called mutable. That means you can uh, change them. You can change elements in the list. You can also add and remove elements from a list. Um, so lists come with a whole bunch of useful methods um, to insert or append or extend um, and indeed search of our index um, that you can use to get things in and out of the list. OK, so the basic um, structure to create a list is just a set of values separated by commas in square brackets. Um, and we'll be using this example list in the um, uh, example slides that follow. So first of all, you can append. So if you append, you're just adding one thing to the end of the list. Um, and as the name suggests, append always sticks things on the end. Um, if you have lots of things to append to a list, then you've, if you want to append a whole list of, to a list, then you should use extend. So extend will go and take a list of values and will go and add those to the end of the, the dictionary, at the, the end of the list. But that's not the only thing where you can do that. So Python um, defines what it means to use certain mathematical operators on lists. So specifically, it defines what a plus and a multiply will mean when you use it um, with lists. And so the plus is does the same thing as an extend. So it combines two lists together by adding the second list to the end of the first list. Whereas multiply will repeat a list several times over. So here you want to think about repeated um, addition. Um, so you could read things times two is saying things plus things. Um, and then you see, based on the example above, that that would simply copy the list over again. There's also worth pointing out here that there's quite a similarity with strings. So strings you can think of as being a sequence of individual characters. They're like a list of letters. Um, and so a lot of things you can do with lists, you could also do with strings. So, for example, um, if you do one string plus another string, what that's equivalent to is doing one list plus another list, and that is concatenation, or extending the list, or in this case, sticking the two strings together. Um, likewise, if you multiply a string by an integer, that's similar to if you multiply a list by an integer. It simply repeats that string that many times over. So here you can see I've added together hello plus space plus world, make hello world. And if I take hello and multiply it by three, I just get hello, hello, hello. Um, strings also come with lots of other methods. Um, some of the ones that are quite useful. Um, so um, a strip is one that you can use quite often. This um, removes blank space from the start and the end of the string. Um, you can also use it to remove other characters from the start and the end of a string if you give it a list of the characters it should be removing um, at, at the, from either end of the string. So that's useful when you're reading text files. If you have, a, um, say, a, a carriage return or a new line or something at the end of the string or you have some leading space at the start of the string that you want to get rid of, strip will go and get, it, get rid of it for you. There's then uh, various methods which will change the... Um, capitalization of your string, so upper and lower, converted to uppercase and lowercase, and title will simply turn the first letter of every word into uppercase. Um, you can also replace to uh, swap parts of one string for another string. And another very useful one um, when you're, particularly when you're reading data from a, a, a file, is split. So what split will do is it will convert a string into a list of strings where each 
uh, string in the list has been separated by the, the character you've specified in split. So in this case, I'm splitting on the space character. So that's basically dividing the thing up into individual words. The only thing you then have to note that if you have a, a double blank space, a double space character, then you end up with an empty word um, because split will go, well, there's the space character and there's another space character, so there must be a word between the two of them. And if two spaces are next to each other, then the word is empty. So back to lists. Because lists know what order their elements in, you're able to index them to get um, specific elements out. And you can also search to say where is an element in a list. Um, so the um, uh, basic uh, indexing is very similar to what we were seeing with dictionaries, square brackets and a number. Uh, just remembering that the first element is always zero in Python. Python always counts from zero. Um, so uh, in this case, um, things three is in fact the fourth element, not the third element. But indexing doesn't just have to be just one value. You can also specify a range or a slice of them. So the general format is start colon end, which will get you items that start from the index start up to, but not including, the end index you give. And there's another variation of it, which will do a start, an end, and then a step, um, which will then, instead of just taking every value between start and end, will take only every step value between the start and the end. Um, if you miss out either of the start or the end, then it's read as from the start of or to the end of. Um, uh, start and end can also be negative numbers. Um, a negative number means counting from the end. So minus one is the last element, minus two is the second last, and so on. And the step can also be negative, which means counting backwards. So it's easy to see some real practical examples here. So um, I have a, a, a list here of things which basically tell you what index they should be in either words, floats, or integers. So if I ask it for lots, square brackets, one colon four, I'm saying from the second element up to, but not including the fifth element. So um, the, um, that's therefore giving us the elements one, two and three from our list which started at zero. Um, if I do one to ten, one colon ten colon two, I'm now asking it from the second element up to, but not including the eleventh element, taking every other element. Uh, again, you can see that's what it's returning you. It's giving you only uh, every other element, so it misses out the two and the four and the six and the eight. Um, in the uh, third example there, I'm asking it from colon minus five, and that basically means from the start and so the fifth last element in the list. So again, you can see it gives me um, the, the first six elements there. And the final example is an interesting one. So it's colon, colon, minus one. So that reads from the first element to the last element, counting backwards. And what that means basically is reverse the order. And so you'll see what I've done is I've just reversed the order of that list. So this um, slicing notation is quite powerful. Uh, it's worth spending a bit of time getting your head around uh, because it's very, very useful in scientific computing. And we'll be using it a lot when we start dealing with large arrays of numbers. You can also search in the index um, to find the, the value, the index value that corresponds to a certain value you're searching for. This is the index method. Um, and again, remember the number it returns starts from zero. So in this case, I've asked it for um, the thing that we depended at the end, uh, which it returns the number three, meaning it's the fourth element in the list because the first element was counted as zero. Um, and um, obviously you can also change list elements. So in this case, I've simply gone back and changed that element to something else. And you can see that's what I managed to go and do. Um, you can remove elements from list. That's the del. Um, again, it's a bit similar to how we were doing the dictionary. Um, you just say uh, which element you want to delete from the list, and then it will remove that element altogether. Um, and your list becomes one shorter. You need to be careful if you're deleting multiple things in a loop, 
that you, um, when you've deleted the first value, you'll have changed the list, and therefore all the um, indexing um, after the value you deleted is now just shifted down by one. Um, so if you're deleting a whole list of things, you really want to start at the, at the end and work your way to the beginning to avoid it re-indexing and, and all the numbers changing under you. Um, you can also use the remove method if you don't know what index you want to remove from, but you just want to remove one particular value, and that will also work. And finally, the pop will um, remove the last element from the list and return it. So that um, pop is equivalent to doing del list minus one. Um, and we having also got the value of that element at the same time. So you can see after all I've done that, I've trimmed my list down quite substantially. And again, you can test whether something is in inner list by using in. So in this case, we're testing whether the value two is in our list. And it says, yes, it is.